Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about various kind of ovarian tumors in brief. So our discussion will be very brief. Some important properties of those tumor will be described here. Now let's start with the dermoid cyst. So dermoid cyst is a immature teratoma. So what is a mature teratoma now? Mature teratoma means all the three derivatives of uh, all the derivatives from all three layers are seen like ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. Okay. Immature teratoma means immature teratoma means there is some amount of derivative from some of these layers. Ectoderm is a very common and it's seen in 100% cases of immature teratoma. So basically you will find very weird structures like skin, hair, tooth, bone in ovary. Okay. What is rocky tendency protuberance? If you see this dermoid cyst, there will be a this spike of growth. On that spike, you will find those teeth, skin, hair like structures. So this is rocky tendency protuberance you see on skin x-ray like that. Okay, most of them are unilateral, only 10% are bilateral, but still there is an incidence of bilaterality, you must scan another ovary when you find a dermoid cyst in one ovary. Okay, it, uh, most common age group will be reproductive age group. USG appearance are described, that is white ball appearance, dash dot a pattern and rocky tendency protuberance. White ball appearance mean this is... Uh, on ovary if you see on the ultrasound you will find a white ball like appearance you will also find dash and dot pattern see this these are the patterns due to skin and hair rocky tendency protuberance already we have discussed what is the treatment excision now let's go to the serous cyst adenoma what is serous cyst adenoma the name suggests serous that means it is a clear fluid no loculi is seen that's why if you see the serous cyst adenoma it will look like this the very clear fluid will be seen, no septa since it is unilocular, 20% are bilateral and the histopathological characteristic is samoma bodies. Okay, now let's go to the mucinous sister adenoma as name described mucinous, there will be secretion of mucin. If you don't know what is what looks mucin look like, that is a cervical discharge, it is a mucin. So, it is a mucin like structure will be there and it is 10 percent bilateral multilocular it is a multilocular with septas okay there is called pseudo maxima peritoneae what is that Max uh, maxima peritoneae that means the peritoneal cavity is filled with mucin but it is due to some other structures like like uh, appendicular pathology will be can be there so Pseudomexuma peritoneae can be seen in mucinous cystic adenoma. Now let's go what is Brenner tumor. Now serous cyst adenoma, dermoid cyst and mucinous cyst adenoma were the cystic tumors. Now comes the Brenner tumor is a solid tumor. It is a benign tumor and it is a rubbery tumor. Till so far we have discussed our benign tumors. But this is a Brenner tumor, it is a rubbery uh, tumor. It, the epithelium you see in that is a resembles the transitional epithelium. Where the transitional epithelium is seen? Is seen in the urinary tract. Now HP examination, histopathological examination. There are some characteristics like Wolthard cell rest and coffee bean nuclei. Pseudo make syndrome can be seen. Now you will realize what is make syndrome. Make syndrome is nothing but fibroma, ascites, and hydrothorax. Unilateral. Okay. So this is this is called make syndrome. It's seen in fibromas. But here we will see ascites. It may be some uh, hydrothorax can be seen. So that's why it's called pseudomake syndrome. Mostly unilateral. They are mostly unilateral. Okay. Brenner's tumors are mostly unilateral. Now let's go with the endometrioid tumor. The name suggests it looks like endometrium. It is associated with endometriosis. 40% of them is bilateral. And the malignant potential is very low. Now comes the... Where the endometrial tumor is a... Endometrioid tumor is a carcinoma. It is a malignant tumor. Okay. 
Now clear cell carcinoma, it is a very malignant highly dangerous tumor with clear cytoplasm cells rich in glycogen it is a chemo resistance so chemotherapy is not an option here this is associated, associated with exposed females to diethyl sterbesterol in their in their intrauterine life okay now now let's discuss what is dysgerminoma so this syndromes oh sorry this tumors we such uh, so far we have discussed were epithelial tumors now it's come to the germ cell tumor and the dysgerminoma is the most common germ cell tumor as the name suggests what is dysgerminoma that means it will be common is in dysgenetic gonads and where we see the dysgenetic gonads in turner syndromes like 450x 45xy sorry 46xy 46xy swear syndrome or it may be testicular feminization syndrome so here you see that the gonads whether it be in the testis or ovary they are dysgenetic so we find this kind of tumors in that so in male also if if the testis are not distended then there is a risk of dysgerminoma in those gonads okay it's common in pregnancy there is a solid lobulated appearance large polyhedral cells it is very sensitive to chemotherapy contrary to the clear cell carcinoma which was very chemo resistant here very sensitive to chemotherapy what is the treatment surgical removal followed by chemotherapy we have good good rate of survival there are some tumor markers like placental alpha uh, a placental alp and ldh now comes the granulosa cell tumor it is also gct right no no it is not gct granulosa cell tumor if you form the uh, short name gct that doesn't mean it is a gct it is not germ cell tumor it is a sex cord tumor okay it secretes estrogen okay and because of this highly amount of estrogens is in the body you will find different effects of those estrogen in the pre puberty patients it will come precocious puberty on the reproductive age group due to high estrogen there will be men uh, menses irregularity and in the postmenopausal patient you will see a bleeding postmenopausal bleeding inhibin is the marker okay now comes to the gynandroblastoma it is a tumor which secretes androgens also and androgens will come with those hyperandrogenemic effects like hirsutism deep voice like those things okay so these these tumors we have discussed right now that G, uh, germ cell tumor sorry granulosa cell tumor and gynandroblastoma are sex core tumors now the comes to the Krukenberg tumor what is that Krukenberg tumor is a tumor of ovary no it is not a tumor of ovary actually it is a metastasis of another tumor on ovary and from which organ stomach CA stomach metastatized to the ovary via retrograde lymphatic spread so it is very important retrograde lymphatic spread happens in this thing they are always bilateral and they are very unique because they have smooth surface despite having a metastasis they are freely mobile despite having they are, they are metastatic tumors there is no adhesion because if you find a metastatic tumor you expect those irregularities adhesions and immobility but here everything is there see free mobile no adhesion smooth surface vexy consistency and they contain the shape of normal ovary so it is very very unique kind of tumor cook and bug tumor signet cell appearance seen on the histopathological examination now comes to the yolk sac tumor yolk sac tumor are basically germ cell tumor they are unilateral highly malignant alp and antitrypsin in the tumor markers cooler duals bodies are seen on the histopathological examination so so far this tumors we have discussed almost all tumors which are very commonly asked in ovarian tumors thank you friends